Well, hello there ladies and gentlemen, Simon here once again with another episode of Black Sails to watch with you all, moving on to the penultimate episode of Season 1, um, and it's it's going to be an interesting one. Um, they are ramping up the question of, did Billy fall? Was he pushed? Uh, you know, what exactly has gone on there? I don't know. One thing I'm fairly certain about is that Billy is not dead. It's not the last that we've seen of Billy. He's definitely going to be making an appearance at some point. Um, he might get picked up by the Scarborough, uh, which would be an interesting situation for him to find himself in. Because as far as I remember, they weren't exactly close to land, so it's not like he's going to be able to just swim to the nearest uh, port and just you know walk back home. So I'm thinking the most likely scenario is either he's somehow still clinging to the ship. I don't know how. Or he is adrift uh, in the debris field and he's going to get picked up by the Scarborough. That's my most... That, that, that my two most likely outcomes. But again, it just kind of plays into this whole can we trust Flint? Can we not? What's his actual goal here? What's the motivation behind everything? Um, there's a lot of other things going on as well with Vane, who has gone off on his own and is staring down this big dwarf-like dude who we've seen in his visions. Um, I don't know what the history is there. I don't know what he hopes to gain from this, but I'm guessing we'll find out a little bit. Um, meanwhile, Eleanor reconsolidated her power. She did have to cede, um, you know, the, the ban on Vane and his men to do that, but she is now kind of we are the need to have her father in place has found herself back in a position of power um, and strength with, you know, you know, obviously her dad being pushed right out of the picture. Uh, and and we saw, you know, uh, the comeuppance of Vane's men who had mistreated Max so badly. And uh, that was a great little moment just to see, you know, him get that and see Anne get the, the final stab you know, to uh, forget the guy's name now. It's, he's got a name that was really staring me in the face because it, it, it it's something relatable to me, but I can't remember what his name is. Um, I did learn something. Uh, I think episode number three is just released on YouTube because these are obviously getting recorded way ahead of time. And someone in the comments of episode three has made me aware that the actor who plays Dufresne, who is the ship's accountant, the one I keep joking looks like John Lennon, sadly passed away um, during seasons one and two. Um, I looked it up and he had a brain tumor. That was really sad news. Um, so I know that going into season two, his character is recast, um, you know, which is, you know, I, I like his character. I like the actor as well. I think he does a good job of portraying, you know, a, a vulnerable, you know, person on a, on a, you know, obviously vicious pirate ship. But uh, yeah, it's just always sad, you know, when people um, pass away and, you know, you've got these documents, as you might call them, the, these documents of their life's work, um, you know, and now knowing that they're not with us any longer is, is always kind of a bit of a, a morbid and sad occasion. So I was a bit, a bit sad to see, or to read that, I should say. But um, that, that's, that's one thing I really enjoy about doing these reactions is you pick up on those little things that you just wouldn't get if you're watching it on your own. You know, if I was watching this on my own, I'd get it to season two and be like, why is he, who's he, you know? So you guys prepping me ahead of time is 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 always appreciated. So thank you for that. Uh, but yeah, let's jump in. So uh, we're going to watch episode seven. Two more to go this season. So let's see what happens. And the body resurrected. What becomes of the sin? Here's the dirty bugger. Will not a trace of it linger? Yes, I can see the guilt. To remind us of the roiling pit you of can see the it's eating him life. inside. And yet, does it not often feel as if life itself is... Oh, God. What the hell? What was the reaction? Hmm. And elected representatives. We agreed upon an agenda. And we spoke about the merits of mutual cooperation over tea. <laughs> so it was bad. Yeah, I think she's being a bit sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> power, I thought they'd burn down all of Nassau. If Mr. Silver doesn't return from the Urca... You and I may find ourselves with problems of our own. Huh. What a day I missed. 
Does he always have the little pointy moustache? Like, come on, starting to look a bit more villainous. All of us wondering what kind of voodoo you used to get eight of Rain's crew to just up and disappear. Hmm. Haven't you heard? They left for Port Royal. Hmm. I'm I don't think crazy. she believes that. Yeah. I don't think anyone believes that. If you've got any thought of working here again, I wouldn't wait too long. What do you mean? Rackham's got no idea how to run this place. We've all got a hand in his pocket. Mapleton would tell him, but uh, busy stealing for herself. So that's why. It's not that they're not making money, it's what that the money is being taken. Because he's distracted and he's never run a brothel before. I think you and I need to discuss the letter that Billy found. Yeah. No. Why exactly? It is that she believes you're going to betray your crew. He got rid of one side of the problem. Gates is the other. He's a thief. <laughs> He's just outright He's saying it now. About Randall. He thought I was asleep at the Scathrys Tavern. I heard him talking. It wasn't Singleton stole the page? Yeah. It was him. He's not quite as simple as he leads on, is he? I don't know what he's talking As I suspected. It was... it was not your decision to make. My life is my own. It's not Benjamin Hornigold's, it's not Charles Vane's. It's not my father's and it's not yours. Do you understand? She makes a good point. You're right. I'm sorry. I think they're both, they're both in the wrong to an extent. Now you think you can just walk back. She can't just ignore his every advice and expect him to not do something, even if it's a, even if it's just leave. When you sailed as captain of these men, they sat compadre for you. So they he's Cartagena for you. Was he on his crew? Them, and I will bring NASA in line. And they've given up the What's life the of a pirate. How did you know to seek me out? Hmm. So he doesn't know him. As far as Nassau. Is there someone there that connects us? Or is it something else? It's going to be to do that scar, isn't it? The mark. Oh, do you care? For fuck's sake, enough. Just spit it out. This is what we do. You are right. You dissemble. And I look the other way. <laughs> it's myself. And supporting you is in everybody's interest. But not today. He's hit the limit. Not after what happened last night. After yeah. what happened last night. He knows he put push Billy. Day. Yeah. Captain. It's no coincidence. He fell. <laughs> Why, what are you saying happened? You told me it was self-defense, but there were no weapons in that cabin. And I looked. I still kept my mouth shut. I don't know why. Yeah. But I know you used the crew to assassinate those people. Why? They died that day. Our men. Then you and I have a problem. Because Billy wasn't expendable. Yeah. To me. He had a real soft spot for him. He was the son. Then perhaps you should have acted like a better father. Ooh. What the fuck did you just say? Wow. You let his suspicions run rampant. Wow. You let his paranoia fester to the point at which when he should have been focused on the Scarborough's guns. Perhaps if you helped him understand the world in which he lived, he'd still be here right now. This is a different side of these two characters that I have not seen yet. I both love and hate it. Where are you going? In the money warehouse before distribution. I intend to sequester a portion of it. How much Request of it? A portion of it. Yeah, but a portion could be 99%. Every man on that crew will still be richer than their wildest dreams. You know as well as I do that no matter how much money they're given, they will drink or and piss it away. Every soldier who's told by his commander that courage will see them through. Every subject who's told by his, his king. 
Has he heard this speech before? Is that what you are to us now? A king. A sovereign. He did say, didn't he, in the first... The was it the first episode? If no one knows. Or was it the trailer? I can't remember. Everyone wins. Don't... Who says no to this? There'll be rich men in a safe place rather than dead thieves on a long road. But what does he want to do with the money? I'm guessing he wants to establish... Them out. I don't know. I'm going to deliver them into something better. Uh, their own country? Somewhere inland? He's always said he wants to go... I will sail with you tomorrow be a farmer. You and I will quietly go our separate ways. And I'll thank you. Not to protest. Damn, he really overstepped the mark. And he has lost a good friend in the process. That was a hell of a scene. And I offer you a chance to be free of this place. Ooh. I'm Charles Vane. And you were a strong crew once. Uh-oh. Proper pirates. Be it. He's tanning them. Before he dragged you away from the sea. <laughs> oh, here we go. Damn. Oh, that was that was a dirty tactic. That looked nasty. What did she say? She said she would take it under advisement. <sighs> Even when I want to like someone, I want you there's got to be something. Different. But do not give up hope. I know it's a sign of the times and it's ingrained in some people, but I thought Eleanor was better than that. Destroy everything we've tried to build here for the past ten years? Or was it just to embarrass me? To show you a way out of all this, to free you. A way out? Have you no memory of how we got in? What they took from us? What did they take? Who is they? What does it matter now? What does it matter? What does it matter? What at least at least I can we confirm that he now. wasn't. Aware of the because pardon. There is no life here. There is no joy. Or sort it out. What are you so talking about? There is joy there. And music. And peace. The door is open. Mm. It, it all depends on their history and how much it will follow them. It requires an intolerable sacrifice. To accept a pardon. To apologise. Apologise? Oh, Who are you apologising to? To England! What did we do wrong? Took everything from us. Sorry, Mr. Silver. Uh-oh. <laughs> You're a thief. Yes, we <laughs> understand. Huh? You're a thief. Randall, what's gotten into you? He's changed Ooh. his mind. What the hell is going on here? Nor do I have the funds to purchase their release outright. Ah, so that's what you'd have to do. So here's what I've done. The able-bodied males will be taken onto the Black Hind under Captain Lawrence to fill a recent rash of desertions. I, I figured they might do that. An agreement with Mr. Dufresne of the Walrus to trade future subsidies and credits to cover the cost. As for us, Eleanor, I, I know how much you worry about me. But I hope the events of the last few days prove that I can handle myself. It does. It's got to be more I trusting. But she also needs to I be a little bit more open from me. to his advice. But there's no reason for you to feel threatened by my partnership with him. If you're to stay with me, I need to know that I can trust you. Eleanor, I will always be tempted to interfere. Yeah. Please get out. Oh, boy. 
So it's like it's like one step forward, two steps back with these two. What's that? Who paid you those coins? She's gonna give. She's gonna be the advisor. Her sole desire is to be swaddled in canvas while he sucks on a fat, milkless breast like a nursing child. And the price we have always charged for mothering is twenty pieces, not five. Who the fuck is she's moving up accusing? in the world? A hand job pays five. I swear, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This will never happen again. Sacred <laughs> bit. It's funny how these things fall into place, fortuitously. It's you. Do not kiss. Do not kiss. I've just had this bloody feeling because this is the bed, he's drunk. And the music and everything is just building up to... Thank God. All right, that's fine. A kiss on the the head is fine. But perhaps, just perhaps. Hmm. You're a goddamn genius. <laughs> uh, again, that could be part of his deception. <laughs> He is an enigma, I think the word is. I can see how he might think that. I did nothing to dispel that notion, though it may not take him a long time to realize who it was that actually brought me into this. Well, mm. we have to deal with our situation as it develops. Dufresne has become a much more important character than I imagined at first. I, having had some time to think about it, they're not certain that you're up to doing what's necessary. Oh, is there another plot? Line, we could forgive. Singleton, we could forgive. We could forgive all of it. But not Billy. Yeah. Billy meant a lot. Requires an answer. So he somehow survived being buried alive. Admittedly, it's not a very deep grave. But still, you'd presume he'd be suffocated. Okay. Yeah, that's all he needed. <laughs> that's a hell of a shot. Oh. He still stood up with the thing in his back. Well, that was an intense episode. Um, a lot of intense scenes and a lot of extra layers added on to many of the plot points. The way that this um, show manages to shift all of the plots around, you know, in the space of one episode is, is kind of crazy. Um, and Flint in the space of like two episodes has gone from, you know, being in a very good position to being in a very, very precarious one. Um, you know, he's not only now got troubles at home with Mrs. Barlow, you know, because it confirms that he didn't uh, have any knowledge of the pardon, nor did he want any part in it. We know exactly what his thinking is. Uh, I think he'd rather die than accept a pardon. And he is determined to make a life for himself in NASA. And now he's also got an issue with the crew. And it's ironic that the crew are doing this so secretively. But he's lost the support of the strongest partner he's probably ever had in Gates. And um, that's no small feat. It, it shows you that there is a repeated history of him doing things without the crew's knowledge. Manipulating, taking advantage of them, gates covering for him. And you know, there's only so far that a man can stretch, and Billy was that limit. And that scene between Gates and Flint, where Flint essentially blamed Gates for not stopping Billy, I I thought things were gonna erupt there, and then that was a hell of a scene. Both of them trying to push back and forth. And again, the 
the thing that makes a show and, and characters specifically very, very good is that firstly, you have to have their convictions be believable, but also be ingrained in logic for that character. You can see the point of both sides. You know, you can see why Gates covers for him so much because deep down he believes that it probably might be best for the crew in the long run. At the same time, you know, you can see that Flint believes himself when he says that, you know, Gates let it go too far with Billy. But, you know, again, I, I, I'll bring up, you know, Eleanor and um, Mr. Scott. Both of those people have points. Eleanor needs to be given the ability to make her own choices without interference. She needs to be trusted that she can lead the business in the way that she feels is necessary. And at the same time, she does need to trust Mr. Scott and take his advice, you know, because he is looking out for her. So it's about compromise. It's about meeting in the middle specifically for those two. But we're at a point now where I think, you know, Mr. Scott said, look, I can't help myself. I cannot sit there and just let you do what you're going to do without trying to interfere. So I'm going to take myself out the picture and, uh, you know, specifically with Eleanor as well, I was thinking to myself, my God, she's, she, you know, she abides slavery when I first, you know, saw that they weren't going to get freed. But then seeing the the reason why, because she'd have to buy them, it wasn't necessarily that, you know, those slaves didn't belong to her. Um, so she didn't have the power to, but she made a fair compromise to try and get them free. And I did figure that, you know, it makes the most sense to have those slaves become part of the labor force um and that's essentially what ended up happening obviously ideal scenario for everyone is that they get released everyone gets to be free but that's not what we're working with here that's not what the show is about and it's not the time period that the show is set in you know you have to accept those kinds of things for for what they are um what you know i think as well is it just the complexity of the three or four different stories that's going on here. You know, you've got Vane as well, who has got this whole other deal with this big bearded guy that he's just offed. And this whole time I was thinking, maybe this is a guy from his past who he's going to go to for help. And it certainly looked that way at the beginning. Um, but it's clear that he was part of that guy's crew when he was a pirate out at sea. Clearly mishandled, mistreated, has trauma over it. And I think from the beginning, he'd set his mind to killing him, taking his crew. And I think that's what the message was all along. It wasn't about going there and making a deal. It was about going there, overcoming your past, fighting your demons, and taking what is yours. And he's taking that crew now. Now, admittedly, I could do without the full frontal nudity from him and Jack, you know, this episode. Um, I just, it's, it's just unnecessary again. It's kind of like, yeah... We get it. You're trying to be gritty. You're trying to be realistic, you know, but it's like in the realms of good taste, let's just rein it in a little bit. Um, what makes the news that the actor who plays Dufresne passing away between seasons here even more tragic is that Dufresne appears to be a much more important character than I'd ever given credit for. You know, at first you think, oh, well, he's just kind of like the, the accountant who is a little bit soft might get a little bit of a focus, you know, because he's part of the crew. Um, in the same way, you know, that some of us have had a little bit of focus. And now it's come to see that he's actually now got a very important role. He's the new quartermaster. He's now caught up in this plot against Captain Flint. Um, you know, and, and it is, it's a surprise. But it shows you how much Billy meant to the crew. Um, you know, and then you've got John Silver... I don't know if we're ever going to re learn his real name. Because uh, uh, I think John Silver is a pseudo name for him. Because he's never given his real name. Um, and that, that game that he's playing there is an interesting one. That's what I mean. So much complexity to every single story here. But this, ancient, this, this, this episode really ramped up the tension to another level. To the point now where, firstly, I think we might actually get to the galleon in the last episode um but i don't think they're necessarily going to be able to take it down i don't think the end result of this season is them ending up with the treasure 
They might reach them. But I think something's going to happen at some point. I don't know if Billy is going to have been picked up by the Scarborough. He's going to have given them details as to what's going to happen. The Scarborough is going to show up and stop things. I don't know if Gates is going to step in and stop something from happening. I really don't want Gates to step in and die to save Flint. Um, Because that's kind of another scenario running through my head. Because it's clear that Gates is, you know, he's divided in his loyalties. He, I can tell he's really struggling. He's conflicted about whether this is the right thing to do, to go ahead, get the money, and then kill Flint. I think there is still that underlying loyalty. And um, I just get the feeling that the last second he's going to have a change of heart and he's going to step in, save Flint, but he's going to die in the process because that's, that's what characters like that tend to do. You know, tend to commit self-sacrifice to, you know, to further the story in that way. But yeah, I, def- I definitely think Billy's going to show up in the finale. In one way or another. We'll have to wait and see. Interesting though. Yeah, good episode. Very good episode. Some really, really good writing as well. And some good acting. Because, you know, it's no good writing a good scene with, with intrinsic dialogue if they can't be delivered. And this show so far is hitting the hitting the uh, the exact points it needs to hit for me. So, yeah. Encouraged. Encouraged by this first season. And you guys say it gets better in the next few seasons. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to this journey. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you for the next episode.